Now that you have your 11 essentials packed and ready to go, let's talk about what to wear on your outdoor adventures. A good layering system will allow you to moderate your body temperature and sweat when you are going hard, and it will keep you warm when the weather suddenly changes for the worse. The most basic clothing system for the outdoors consists of three layers, the base layer, the middle layer, and the outer layer. Clothing is a personal thing. This video is just an example of the most basic layering system for the outdoors. Once you understand the three most basic layers, you can customize your clothing system to your liking and adjust it depending on the weather conditions and the intensity of activity. The base layer is the clothing worn directly against your skin. It helps to regulate your body temperature and wick away moisture. Wet clothing in the outdoors, especially when it's cold outside, will make you much colder, and this includes moisture from sweat during activity. The three key considerations for base layers are the material, the weight, and the fit. When it comes to clothing for the outdoors, some materials are better than others, and this is especially true for your base layer. The best materials for wicking away moisture are wool, silk, and synthetic fibers like nylon, polyester, or spandex. Each material has its pros and cons, but generally synthetics are better at wicking away moisture and are more durable, but they're not as odor resistant and not good for the environment. Wool, on the other hand, does a great job at wicking away moisture, provides warmth, and is very odor resistant. It's also better for the environment, but it's not as durable. And what about cotton? Cotton is not a great material for wicking away moisture and takes much longer to dry. You are better off leaving cotton at home in the winter and saving it for a hot summer day. The next base layer consideration is weight. There's lightweight, medium weight, and heavy weight. Lightweight is better for moderate to cool temperatures with moderate to intense activity. Medium weight is suitable for cold temperatures with moderate to intense activity, and heavy weight is best for below freezing temperatures and not as intense activity. Of course, this is just a guideline. In the end, it'll come down to personal choice and which weights and which temperatures and which activity will work for you. The heavier the weight, the more warmth it will provide. However, this is not the primary job of the base layer. Most of your warmth and insulation will come from the middle layer. The last consideration with the base layer is the fit. For maximum wicking efficiency, the base layer should be snug against your skin, not loose, but not so tight and restrictive either. Keep in mind that a base layer includes both tops and bottoms, and underwear too. Wet underwear and bras are not fun in the winter. The middle layer is the insulating layer and is meant to retain your body heat. Again, some materials and designs are better than others, and the more efficient the material is at trapping your body heat, the warmer it will be. So these options include wool, synthetic blends, fleece, down, and synthetic down. Fleece might seem old fashioned, but it works quite well, even when it's slightly damp. It also dries fast and is very breathable. Fleece is available in different weights. The heavier the weight, the warmer it will be. Sometimes these weights are expressed as 100, 200, and 300. Fleece is not very wind resistant, but this is where our outer layer comes into play. Also, contrary to popular belief, fleece is not a natural material. It is made of polyester. So again, the impact of the environment should be considered. Down is probably one of the best materials for a warm insulation layer. The loose structure of the down feathers traps air, creating a layer in which cold air cannot enter and heat cannot escape. The higher the fill power, the puffier and warmer the jacket. Usually fill power ranges from 400 to 900. And the greatest advantage is that these jackets are lightweight and compress easily. For the warmth it provides compared to the weight and size, you would be silly not to adventure into the winter or high mountains without one. 
Of course, there are a few drawbacks to down. A down jacket can tear easily and down loses its efficiency if it gets wet and it also takes a long time to dry. This is why it's always recommended to store your down layers in a dry bag. Not only does it protect it from the rain or snow, but also from accidental water bottle leaks or slips into the river. While I just spoke about down with high regard, it's not to say that synthetic isn't a lesser option. Synthetic jackets and sweaters are not as warm or compressible as down, but they do not lose as much efficiency if damp, and they are also more budget-friendly and more durable. Now, of course, the middle layer can be one article of clothing or it can be a few articles of clothing, and they are usually not worn during activity when you're working hard and sweating, unless it is very cold outside then maybe one is worn during exercise, saving the warmest layer for when you rest. Your body temperature will drop quickly, even after a short pause, because of the moisture from sweating and your blood vessels being more dilated, that is open, you'll lose heat much more quickly and become cold quite fast. As for a middle layer for your lower body, again, it's personal. I rarely need a middle layer for my legs during a day out ski touring, but if it's really cold at the ski resort or just hanging out at camp in the winter, then I might bring a middle pant layer as an option. The last of the three basic clothing layers for the outdoors is the outer layer, also known as the shell layer. This outer layer protects you and the base layer and the middle layer from rain, snow, wind, and abrasion. Without this outer layer, the base and middle layers could get wet or subject to the wind, dropping your core body temperature. An outer layer should be wind and waterproof, like this hard shell jacket. It also could be a pair of pants. These are often treated with DWR, or durable water repellent. Some outer layer jackets are water resistant, not waterproof, but they're fine for conditions that are not as wet. They're usually cheaper than fully waterproof shell jackets. But the major drawback to a hard shell jacket is poor breathability. Moisture can get trapped under this layer and make you wet. It needs to evaporate, which is why you should look for hard shell layers with zippered vents to help regulate heat and evaporation. Soft shell jackets are outer layer jackets that are not waterproof, but they do have some resistance against wind and light rain. They are more breathable, flexible, durable, and some even have a lining for warmth. However, they are a bit heavier than hard shell jackets. Now these jackets are better for environments where there's little precipitation or dry conditions. Most hard shell or soft shell jackets are synthetic. So again, with the consideration to the environment, take good care of your outer layers to extend its life and to reduce as much waste as possible. The head, face, hands, and feet also need consideration. A large amount of heat loss occurs through the head. So always have a warm hat that covers your ears, and when it's really cold outside, make sure it's thick enough to provide insulation. The face and neck should not be forgotten. A thin flannel face buff or a full-on fleece neck gaiter can make a difference on how comfortable and warm you are out in bad weather. Face and neck garments protect the face from cold temperatures and they help lock in the heat and prevent it from escaping through the neck of the jacket. Eyes need protection as well. Polarized sunglasses or goggles are a must anytime you are outside. Even if the weather is overcast, eye protection from blowing rain and snow is a good option to have. For cool weather, thin gloves will keep your hands warm. In temperatures that are colder and in wet conditions, wear a glove liner and a heavy insulating waterproof glove over it. Mittens are warmer than gloves, but they do not have as much dexterity. For your feet, wool socks are great, thick or thin. 
However, the sock will not do much if your footwear isn't adequate. So be sure your footwear has the proper insulation and moisture proofing for the conditions. In summary, the three most basic clothing layers for the outdoors are the base layer to wick away moisture, the middle layer to provide warmth, and the outer layer to provide protection. Depending on the weather conditions and activity, you may need to adjust your clothing system and eventually you'll find what is best for you. Just remember, the marker of a good layering system is that it will allow you to cool off when you're going hard and it will keep you warm when the weather suddenly changes.